did I get you? I was unsure if I would or not, but uh, no, I'm not quitting YouTube. No, I'm not gonna quit testing guns for a living. But what we are gonna call it quits on is the initial run on our Ballistic Advantage machine gun. And what I mean by that is we said that we were going to run it until it quit. Well, I actually went in and took a look at our data sheet here and it looks to me, at least by my count, that we have exactly 100 magazines through this particular gun. Because we load to 28 on our magazines, that means we have 2,800 rounds through it. And I have a relatively important test coming up that means that the gun needs to run flawlessly. I need to take as many variables out as we can. So I'm actually going to break it down and clean it today. The part I need for that other test is actually the lower and we're going to do that separately because it needs to be detail cleaned. But I thought we could just take a look at the upper here and see how it's doing as far as parts wear. And then we'll also probably shoot it again uh, with some optics to see how it's performing as far as accuracy after 2,800 rounds. So first off, this thing is filthy, absolutely filthy. I would show you down inside this receiver uh, because basically my method of keeping guns running is to spray it full of LPS until she, it, she absolutely quits. So uh, it may be seized shut when I pick it off the tactical walls uh, mod wall where it hangs. It may be seized shut there, but I'll kick it open and spray it full of lube. And usually it'll run the rest of the day with maybe one or two hiccups. I'm saying that we had probably 10 to 12 malfunctions across the entire uh, breadth of the testing with this thing and a lot of that was suppressed shooting so we can't really fault the gun for that. Uh, we basically start out shooting the gun uh, unsuppressed for the day, make sure that it's going to work and then we throw the can on it and it's a crap shoot on how it's going to be gassed. Sometimes it's perfect, other times it's not. Woo! So uh, the Radiant Raptor does look like it's in fairly good shape and actually while I'm thinking about it because I'm going to be playing with the camera a fair amount today we're going to go ahead and glove up so I don't get it all over my camera. So you can definitely tell that I am right-handed and that I run my charging handle with my left because you can see that there's a nice wear line there but basically the way that that happens I grab the charging handle like this and I pull back and up when I'm doing it because of the way the gun is indexed when I reload and what that creates is this charging handle gets torqued in its channel and creates that wear line against the upper receiver. So this is why you want a really high quality charging handle so that it doesn't break under that kind of stress. This thing looks pretty good, like I said, but I am going to swap it out to one of their other models. And, and they may have more models than just two, but the two of consequence is the standard one and the SD model that has extra vents up here at the front. We have a full video out on that. And basically what that's designed is to keep the gas from running back in your face. This gun is designed to melt cans. <laughs> so uh, we should probably have it optimized for suppression and that's what we're gonna do. Probably five, 600 rounds. I've had this on the front, the dead air pyro. And yep is basically welded together. So <laughs> that's gonna take extra work to basically clear out. But if you guys wanna see a full video on the Dead Air Pyro, I'll have a link in the description for that as well. The sights, one of the videos I posted on Instagram said that they were loose and I tend to agree with them. And really what it is is the, the gun was super hot. And that particular day we had 16 magazines run through that gun in the space of about an hour and a half. This gun was super hot. This is much tighter than they were, and I think it just expanded from heat, but there is a little bit of play, ever so slightly loose, so we need to go back in there and reapply the Loctite. I may even use Rock Set. Even the red Loctite appears to have melted off the front of it because it can do that. The rear sight, is solid. So it was definitely heat expansion that caused that to happen. Looking down inside, the gas tube is still straight. That's obviously important. Going down the bore now, rifling looks excellent on this thing. I would expect it to shoot true. Handguard wobbles a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can isolate this for you guys. Wobbles ever so slightly. Probably just tighten that up and she'll probably be good to go. Now let's go 
to the uh, the party here. This thing has been absolutely, you guys remember what this thing looked like when it was new? And I lamented them sending me such a nice carrier because I was so sad that I was going to destroy it in this way. This may not look like it, but it was a beautiful nickel boron carrier when it came in here. And you can see that it is absolutely baked. So let's go ahead and take a look inside here. Firing pin. Looks good, looks straight, no problems there. Lots and lots of carbon buildup. It is hard to close with the bolt. <laughs> See if I can get this cam pin out. <laughs> it does not want to come out. Uh, oh man, again, nickel boron, but lots and lots of buildup on that guy. It looks like it's in good shape, no cracks, a little bit of deformation at the junction there which is typical on a lot of uh, these cam pins. You'll see a little line of deformation there where the two surfaces kind of shear. And there we have it. Gas rings are in good shape. Going for the extractor pin here, this is liable to be fun. A little bit of polishing around where the wings of the extractor come in. It's not tactile, it's just visual. I did a whole video on this. There are two places in extractor brakes. One here at the front, which is very uncommon. Everybody checks that. Unless you drop your bolt on a round that is in the chamber already, you almost never see these things break. If you see people do stupid stuff like that, like plus one in their gun and stuff, that's where you see the chips come in because basically that piece of brass is snugged up against the headspace and then you're dropping something under spring tension. That's when you break the extractor and it's usually there on the front face where the claw is broken. Uh, the real place where they typically break from just hard use is one or, one or both of these wings here. And these look good, these look great. I will also note that Ballistic Advantage added the excess extractor strength. So it's basically an extra little spring in there. The actual bolt itself looks good. None of the lugs look damaged or anything like that. They appear to all be uniform. Again, super dirty. The thing is not bent. Maybe a little bit of peening here on this lug. But what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and spritz this thing down, clean her up a little bit. <laughs> it won't come off. Boys and girls, would you believe that that is the same bolt carrier group that we just saw a few minutes ago? You can even see the Ballistic Advantage spade there on the front now. Uh, did not think that it would come that clean. However, the bolt, I gave up on. So actually what we're gonna do here real quick is actually roll in something I've been meaning to do for a while, which is this guy. And this is a collab between HM Defense and Young Manufacturing. And basically what Young Manufacturing has done is reworked the HM Defense HMB bolt. It's an SAE 9310 bolt that has been precision ground in a few different spots to ensure that it gets that perfect center alignment or as close to perfect as you can get. But that, uh, that whole alignment thing has been addressed. Uh, sometimes you can buy a junky bolt from someplace and it may wobble in the chamber. And I'm gonna venture to guess that this, yeah, there's no wobble in that whatsoever. And you can tell if it's got any really quickly by going like this, and it should feel like ball bearings. Basically, no run out in the part whatsoever. So you guys know the rules, I can't really link there, but you guys are smart people, you know how it works. You can go find more information on the Young Manufacturing HMB collab. But the reason this is important, guys, is that you'll notice that where that HMB patent is, should be a hole. And that's the big thing of the HMB bolt is that it gives you the full or at least three quarters of the circumference of that bolt lug there for your cam pin to go in. So it isn't just two little wings that support the thing, you get at least three quarters of the circumference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this one for a while and see if it performs just as well. And that way I have two bolts to run in this thing because I have a feeling that eventually we will break a bolt and this guy is going in the ultrasonic cleaner. In she goes.
not to return for some time. I mean, you can't put it back in the safe without knowing, right? That's the way I think about it. Functional. It is either the next day or two days later. They all kind of run together. I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I've gone ahead and mounted a primary arms, six power on here. And I've got some 223A. We're gonna shoot that accuracy I told you guys about. I've since gone in and cleaned out the lower and we're just doing a function check now. So, function check and accuracy coming your way. Here we go. 